This video is on the objective, make a conclusion and interpret the results for testing the difference between two means. And this is with population standard deviations known. So that means you're going to be using a z-score, right? Talking about normal distributions and uh, not, not the student's t. And this is using the critical value or rejection region approach, right? Same thing. All right. So let's get to the question here. Again, if you want to see more about the objective, click on more instruction. Look at their notes, their examples, their videos. Hopefully those help you out a bit more. All right. So here, an automobile manufacturer claims that the population mean braking distance of its premier vehicle called the Hawk is less than the population mean braking distance of its main competitor, the Wildcat. Ryan Potier or Potier, who cares? All right, is a writer, so Ryan is a writer for a national automotive magazine and we'd like to verify the claim made by the manufacturer for an article, right? The claim that the average braking distance for the Hawk is less than the average braking distance for Wildcats. Uh, he contacts the manufacturer of each vehicle and uses the information to assume that the population standard deviation of the braking distance from 60 miles per hour to zero is 4.59 feet per hawk for the hawk and 4.38 feet for the wildcat right so these are like sigma one and sigma two right the population standard deviations are known here uh, ryan randomly selects brand new vehicles of each model and conducts a brake test on each car where each vehicle is stopped from 60 miles per hour in a controlled environment. Uh, the results of the test are provided in the table below. Right, so he took 31 Hawks and their average braking distance was 114.83 feet. He took 32 Wildcats, randomly selected Wildcats, and their average braking distance was 117.36 feet. All right, they're saying here, let alpha be 0.01, right, the significance level be 0.01, 1%. Mu1 is the population braking distance, population mean braking distance in feet of the Hawks and mu2 be the population mean braking distance in feet of the wildcat. If the test statistic is, you know, this z score, z is about negative 2.24, and the rejection region is any value less than or equal, technically less than or equal to uh, negative 2.326, what conclusion could be made about the population mean breaking distance of the hawk and the wildcat? And identify all appropriate conclusions. Right? So we're asked to select all that apply here, so more than one answer. You're going to select one of these, right? You either reject the null hypothesis or fail to reject it, and then you have one of these for your conclusion. All right, so I'm going to go to a piece of paper here and we'll set up those hypotheses first because right, I want to know what my null hypothesis is and what the claim is and all that uh, before we write a conclusion. Right? So remember, every, every hypothesis test should start with some sort of claim or belief that is to be tested. Now, this, uh, this automobile manufacturer claims in the very first sentence that the, the average braking distance for the Hawk is less than the average braking distance for the Wildcat. So remember, mu1 right, was the average braking distance for the Hawk, and they're, they're claiming that that's less than the average braking distance uh, for the Wildcat, which was you know, represented by mu2. Now another way to say this, if we take a look at the difference in means, is that mu1 minus mu2 
is less than zero, right? just subtracting mu2. And then once a claim is established, we set up our hypotheses. All right, um, this does not involve equals, so this will be representing represented by the alternative hypothesis. And you know, since that's the parameter is less than a value, uh, this is going to be a left-tailed test which you'll see when I draw a picture of the normal distribution later. Then the null hypothesis opposes this, right? We have mu1 minus mu2. The opposite of is less than is, uh, is greater than or equal to zero. But, you know, usually they just write the equal part, what's being assumed. All right, you're going to assume that mu1 minus mu2 equals zero, right? Ass Let's assume that the average braking distance for the, both these models of car, the Hawk and the Wildcat, assume that they're equal. Assume that there is no difference. And then based on our you know, test statistic and all that, do we reject this assumption or not? You know. Okay, now they already told us, you know, they took the samples and you know, we, had a, we had a significance level of 1%. And then you take your samples, you calculate a test statistic. Now they already gave it to us, right? The test statistic for the difference in our sample means uh, was approximately you know, negative 2.24. And uh, you know we're talking about normal distribution here, right? Z scores. And if I look at a little graph here. Remember the, remember the Z distribution, the standard normal, with a bell-shaped symmetrical curve. The Z score underneath the peak was a Z score of zero. And they gave us the critical value. Now again, this is a left tail test, so the rejection region, is this going to be in the left tail? So I'm looking for, you know, what's this score here that has an area of alpha, right, an area of 1% to the left. And that was the opposite of Z.01, which they gave us as negative 2.326. Right, that's negative, a Z score of negative 2.326 is the entrance to this rejection region in the left tail. Sorry about my sniffling. Now the question is, does our samples, you know, do our does our sample test statistic fall in that rejection region or not? Well, negative 2.24 would be like here. You know, that that's not beyond negative 2.326. So our test statistic is not in the rejection region. So that means we don't reject, right? We would fail to reject the null hypothesis. So that means I'm keeping this assumption. We're keeping that. And if we're keeping that, that means we're not supporting, we're not keeping this other statement. And this other statement was the claim, right? The claim that the average breaking distance for the hawk was less than the average breaking distance for the wildcat. That's this statement here, and we're saying no. We're keeping this. We're going to keep the. We're going to keep the statement that they're equal, not that one's less than the other. All right, so we're going to not reject the null hypothesis, and then the conclusion from this would be that, you know, there there is not enough evidence to support the claim. Right? We are not supporting the claim. So there is, you know, not evidence for the claim. I'll just say there's not evidence for the claim. Right? Or there's insufficient evidence to support the statement that, you know, the average dis distance, breaking distance for the hawk is less than the average breaking distance for the, for the wildcat. But that's what we're asked to do on the homework. You know, I said we fail to reject the null. And then, 
you know, I, I was saying there's not enough evidence, right? So the fourth one here, there is insufficient evidence at this 1% significance level to conclude that the population mean breaking distance of the hawk is less than the population mean breaking distance of the wildcat, right? There is not enough evidence to support that claim. Again, wonderful. It's all based on where does the test statistic fall, you know, compared to the critical value, and does it, you know, fall in that rejection region, which in this case was a left tail because it was just a left tailed test. All right. So again, hopefully, watching me do this, uh, looking at more instruction, reading the answer explanations when they come up. Hopefully, all that stuff helps you uh, when you work on this material on your own. And thanks for watching.